I think that floor really mirrored what we saw from the phase one frontline experience with osimertinib and seeing PFS ranges first line in the 18 to 20 month range, which we've never seen before, which somewhat mirrors the, the electinib data in the ALK positive patient population. When you're getting to a PFS of close to two years, that's practice changing. Um, uh, not even to mention the toxicity discrepancies between osimertinib and a first or second generation TKI. Uh, I've had the fortunate opportunity to now prescribe osimertinib frontline now twice uh, since uh, the data came out. And it's a very different discussion with these patients because you don't really have to educate them about the rash or diarrhea because there's really very low incidence of that, at least from the trials and also in my experience. So um, this has been practice changing, I think, not only because we're seeing these huge progression-free survival uh, uh, benefits. We're seeing lower toxicity. Um, and I think also there's, there's good data to suggest that osimertinib has a very good chance of crossing the blood-brain barrier uh, and eliciting responses in the brain. And I think we saw data at ASCO uh, to speak to that. So for all of those reasons, I think I've always been taught, use your best drug first. There's uh, opponents of this to say, well, when you get osimertinib, then what are you going to do next? And I think this is where we have to move the field. Uh, this is why osimertinib is now first, and now we can start to figure out what to do next, the same way we didn't know what to do next after erlotinib. So, so I think that I, I look forward to the FDA approval of this. Uh, in the meantime, um, I, I think we all deserve, our patients deserve getting the best drug first, and I think based on the flora data, uh, that really is osimertinib.